And today we're going to talk about what JP Morgan did this week, moving 14.2 million ounces, which Chris talked about with Andy Sheffman in a great interview. And he explained some things that I didn't even understand about that. Uh, we're going to go into that. And who delivered to who today or yesterday, was it, when silver and palladium deliveries just started for the September contracts or what happened to those 2,150 contracts worth of silver that JP Morgan put up for sale uh, last week. In short, the banks are buying, the clients are selling, the banks are hoarding warrants, at least if not physical supply. SLV holdings keep falling. A Palladium update on the commitment of traders reports. They keep getting worse for Palladium, at least for the shorts. And silver is at a critical technical juncture now going back all the way to 2008 when the financial world abruptly changed and the Fed went on an inflation spree. The gold to silver ratio is also at a critical juncture right now and the COMEX gold supply, at least the eligible supply and storage is back down to where it was before the lockdown crisis began and the supply of gold exploded. And another small lesson in central bank gold hoarding, which is much less meaningful than one would tend to think. Today's Silver Report is brought to you by Fortuna Silver Mines, symbol FSM. And I wanted to use this little page on its investor presentation, not to make a point about Fortuna specifically, but to make a point about something I've said about the gold to silver ratio over and over again. And I still believe this is true and it is going to happen at some point. Uh, where the gold to silver ratio will fall to somewhere around 15 to 1, maybe 20 to 1, maybe 25 to 1, somewhere in that range. It doesn't really make a difference practically because when we're there, it will be the bell ringing that the end game is in full bloom. Anyway, what is my point here? Well, if you look at how much gold versus how much silver Fortune has mined uh, in Q2 2022 here, um, you can see that here we have 64.3 thousand ounces of gold and 1.3 million ounces of silver. Fortuna, of course, is a gold and silver miner ever since its acquisition of Rocks Gold last year. Uh, and if you take this and you divide this by this, you have a gold to silver ratio. It is about 20 to 1 uh, in silver ounces versus gold ounces. Not all gold and silver miners have this same ratio, but if you take the entirety of the gold and silver mining industry. It is about, you know, 20 to one, 25 to one, something like that. And that is the na the natural monetary ratio for a very good reason. Because if both gold and silver are circulating as monies without any impediments from government, without government saying that uh, a currency is pegged to one metal over the other, you have a bimetallic standard, which was historically the freest uh, monetary regime we've had then the natural monetary ratio would be somewhere between 15 and 25 to 1, as is the natural uh, abundance of these metals. Not exactly that, but somewhere around there. And so why does the ratio change? Why does the ratio go to like 60, 80, 81, where we are now? Uh, because one metal is favorable for another. I mean, technically, the dollar is now under a gold standard. Yes, not statutorily, but what gives the dollar its value is that it is exchangeable for gold. And the silver standard was abandoned in 1873. Now, when one metal is favored over the other, you can have a gold substitute in the form of a dollar, which if honest would mean that there is no need for silver. But at some point, those gold substitutes are going to break down. And when they do, there will be no functioning gold substitute and there will be only one choice of what metal to go to for retail transactions, and that will be physical silver. So for a short period of time following the immediate end game, there's going to be a period where silver coins are going to trade physically among the population because there will be no other choice for retail transactions. And that is when we have to spend our silver stacks. Fortuna shows why we're waiting for a 15 to 20 to one ratio in gold to silver eventually and why economically, it will happen at some point, even if briefly. This week, we're going to begin with a look into what JP Morgan did this past week in terms of moving eligible ounces to the registry, meaning they're moving them for sale against futures contracts. Um, Andy Sheckman pointed out in, uh, in his latest show with Chris that uh, these ounces are probably already sold. And I can tell you from experience getting uh, uh, ownership of warrants. I did that one time where I took ownership of a 5,000 uh, ounce contract 
and the warrant was delivered into my account. You have what you have to do is you have to notify the broker that you're going to stand for delivery before the delivery window opens. Otherwise they force roll you out of the contract into the next active contract. So you have to notify them uh, with an intent to stand for delivery. And even then there's a big trouble. So what probably happened was JP Morgan uh, was notified that 2,850 contracts were going to be stood for delivery. Uh, so I looked into, uh, first of all, the history of uh, of the, the amount of silver taken off of eligible and interregistered. Uh, going back to here is late 2003. This is a 20-year bars here chart. Um, up bars are you know going back into registered and down bars are taken out. So here you have this, it's hard to see here, but this long thin bar here is where I drew this red line. And any lines, these are weekly bars. So these are weekly transfers into the registry. The only two times where this was exceeded this past week was exceeded was in July, 2020, just prior to July, 2020 during the, uh, the lockdown fiasco. Uh, when I think it was like something like 15,000 contracts were delivered. So 30 million ounces were moved out of the re- out of uh, eligible into, into the registry in this month alone. That was an all-time record. And here you have in 2004, it happened once. I forgot which month exactly or what exactly were the circumstances there, but silver was very, very low at that time and somebody was taking a bunch of delivery. So this is very, very rare. 14.2 million ounces is an incredible amount. JP Morgan has less than that amount left uh, if you take into account the uh, amount of silver that it's holding for SLV, so it's running out of silver to sell against contracts. Now, what exactly happened here? Um, I'm going to go to silver first because we've been talking about that. So here you have the actual deliveries for the first day of deliveries, delivery date, September 1st. Um, this just came out yesterday, this report. This is the daily report. You see here, uh, this red box that I circled, this is uh, what happened with the first tranche of deliveries. Uh, actually, if we go back here for a second, um, in the left side here, we have the remaining open interest um, for the September contract just prior to delivery is 2,879. So the amount of silver that JP Morgan moved to the registry was 2,850 contracts. That's all, it pretty much equals out the 2,979 contracts that are standing for delivery. So JP Morgan was pretty much uh, informed of this a few days before, which is why it moved all that silver. Now we move to here to the silver, to the daily silver delivery here. We see the biggest numbers. The two biggest numbers here are both JP Morgan. The, the C stands for client account. The H stands for a house account. Issued means they, they issued the silver for delivery and stopped means they took the silver for delivery. So here we have 838 contracts uh, on the on the uh, delivery day, the first delivery day, by JP Morgan house account means the bank itself for the house account is delivering into a JP Morgan client account, uh, which took delivery of 999 contracts, some from other parties here. Um, so we see here that, uh, that it may be Wells Fargo or Marix or whoever these people are, or who these banks are, they also issued and they delivered. But my point is that JP Morgan house account delivered all of its 838 contracts, 838 warrants to a JP Morgan client account, which is how JP Morgan knew because it was probably their brokerage that was handling this stuff. Now, if we move to um, to gold, gold also had a big delivery day. Uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't an active contract in the sense that silver was, but it was it was still a pretty active contract. Uh, here we see something pretty interesting. I put a box around these. These are all house accounts. These are all banks. So HSBC, Wells Fargo, Merrick's Capital, Scotia Capital, and Bank of America Securities. They stopped means they took delivery of gold contracts. Uh, and I did the calculations on this. This is the vast, vast majority of all the contracts delivered, of all the, the warrants delivered in gold uh, for September 1st, and it totals $496,108,800 at a settlement price of $1,944.30 per ounce. So my point is that all of the, the client accounts here, these are private accounts with the C's, uh, whoever they belong to, these are the ones that issued most of the contracts. And the only ones that took delivery were the bank house accounts for the banks themselves. The banks are hoarding gold warrants. That's the point here. Do they see something? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a big bankster, but they're taking gold warrants. So we'll see what happens to these things.